Welcome viewers, I am Mamta, PGT Psychology, continuing chapter 1 of class 12th. Today we will be covering the topic of culture and intelligence. We will also be covering the content of emotional intelligence, special abilities and creativity and intelligence. Let us start with culture. Now let me ask you the question, what is culture? Culture basically talks about any values that are specific to a particular societal setup food, clothes, belief system, a particular culture might believe in ghosts, the other culture may not believe in it. So every culture has a very specific upbringing for different people and therefore it grooms people according to its own rituals, values, ideologies. So definitely culture influences every psychological variable, every psychological component that we are going to study. Now let us talk about the two extremes of culture. We have western culture and we have Indian culture. Now of course nowadays Indians are becoming westernized and the other way around is also happening. But the typical when we study the typical Indian culture and the typical western culture, we have the two extremes. Now let us understand what are they all about and how they influence intelligence development. Now western culture is also having a concept which is known as technological intelligence. Technological as the name suggests talks about cognitive skills, talks about mind, talks about brain power, talks about automaticity. So if I am using computer that is obviously a part where my brain is functioning in accordance with automatic functioning. I do not have to put in any effort. I am given a project, I look up on Google, I search for it and I make a project, a PPT, as simple as that. So that involves minimal moves, therefore I am not making any movement, sitting there having all the data at my uh, uh, exposure, I am trying to understand it immediately. There is no wait, no delay, no hard work, no understanding. Everything happens very quick. This is minimal moves. I understand how to relate concepts, how to generalize concepts, but of course my thinking is limited to that area only. I may not be able to use my emotions, I may not be able to use my values. So this is where technological intelligence has a very strong cognitive component, but yet it fails when we talk about the social and emotional setup. Look at Indian perspective. This is what we call as integral intelligence. Now in India, we have families, large family setups, we have relations, we have bondings, we have get togethers, we have emotions which are attached, we have attachments. As against the western culture where it is a very individualistic culture, it only focuses on the person and his achievements. Our culture focuses definitely on bondings, relations. So here we are going to have emotions and society as a very important component. Do not you think so? When we mention this term, what will people say? We are talking about emotions of other people, societal values and norms. So this is where intelligence gets affected. And this is where we bring in the concept of buddhi. This concept was given by J.P. Das, a great psychologist who primarily focused on social competence and emotional competence. Now there are four characteristics of buddhi, there are four kinds of competence which combines the technological intelligence also. But the best part about Indian aspect is it is a very holistic intelligence development because when we talk about India, we are talking about all the components, not just thinking but also emotions. This is the reason why Indians are valued abroad. Okay, let us look at the four components. Cognitive capacity is the first one. So this is exactly the same what technological intelligence deals with. Mind, thoughts, problem solving, mental processes, all of it. Second is social competence. This is where integral or buddhi comes into picture. Why do we call it integral? Because we are combining all the four components and we are giving a holistic picture to intelligence. So social competence talks about uh, if you see a blind person walking on road, will you not want to help him out? If you talk about people who are old, would you prefer to leave them in an old age home 
or would you prefer to bring them up and be with them and spend time with them especially if you talk about your grandparents that is social competence societal values emotional competence when you spend time in relations when you invest your energy in relations when you help out other people when you respect the other people the concept of saying namaste or the concept of touching and bending the bending and touching the feet of elders that is all about emotional competence where we give importance to the emotions of the other person as well as of your own self last is the entrepreneurial competence now this is a business related aspect now when we talk about work we talk about small scale industries we talk about self financed industries where people are getting together collectively and having their enterprises this is an example of entrepreneurial competence let's look at the next content which is emotional intelligence now let me ask you this question a person who is successful in life is that person also having a very good family setup is that person also personally successful the answer may not be affirmative because if you are focusing all your energies on your work you may not have the time to deal with your emotions and the family this is what we are talking about the feeling side of intelligence let's look at the definition emotional intelligence is a set of skills that underlie accurate appraisal expression and regulation of emotions now appraisal means i am trying to understand and judge what i am feeling similarly i try to understand what the other person is going through expression if i am feeling sad i have complete right to express what is making me feel sad and how can i deal with that sadness if i am aware of it definitely i am able to express it also regulation of emotions i can manage i can monitor and i can control the emotions now daniel goleman has done wonderful research on this aspect of intelligence and has given 10 different kinds of skills which comprise of under the category of emotional intelligence now let's look at the major definition of intelligence given this feeling side of intelligence rather given by salovey and mayer now these two people said the ability to monitor one's own and others emotions to discriminate amongst them and to use this information to guide one's own thinking and actions this again refers to the same concept that i am able to become aware of what am i feeling about myself about others check it express it monitor it regulate it change it control it and definitely it's going to guide my thinking now let me tell you one thing here if you are undergoing a certain issue a problem that you are facing in your life are you able to think objectively about that issue are your emotions not interfering are you not over generalizing or hyper reacting it does happen and that is where your studies get affected now this is one aspect that if you are able to understand what you are going through you can manage it it will not affect your occupational or academic area now to measure this psychologists have talked about the concept of eq like we have the concept of iq to measure intelligence to measure emotional intelligence we have the concept of emotional quotient now here one more concept which we need to understand is you need to be in the present situation here and now if i am right now speaking and i am thinking about something else that happened in the past i will fumble i will get confused so this is where if you are living in the present moment not carrying the past baggage letting it go you move on easily you let go easily you accept things easily and you live in the present moment this is a very strong feature of emotional intelligence of course we've talked about sensitivity as a concept that is also a part of emotional intelligence let's move on to the next topic which is special abilities now we have talked about intelligence as a general ability required for all kinds of task here we're talking about aptitude as a special ability which is specifically primary to any exceptional task that you do for instance a child having a very good observation with regard to mechanical skills he can correct and improve all the tools with the use of all the tools any electrical problem that comes in 
So he has a certain ability which is innate. There is no change in his ability. The only thing is if he is given the training, he can polish that skill because the base is already there. That is where we say aptitude is inborn. It is innate ability which is specific or specialized which can be polished by that skill can be polished with training. Now, if I talk about interest, like most of you have taken up subjects, if it is by your own choice and you are able to do them, like some of you might have faced problems in maths or science, the others might have faced problems in SST or in any other subject which is the language. So here, that is your aptitude. If I'm trying and trying to do a particular subject, but I'm still not able to do it, I'm putting in the hard work, I'm trying to understand through the use of different resources, I'm still not able to do it. So that is where I feel I am not equipped or specialized, no matter how much hard you try, you cannot do it. For instance, a child doesn't have musical aptitude. He doesn't have the aptitude for music, but you keep on trying to polish his skill. What will happen? He will not be able to do it. So when uh, Sachin Tendulkar cannot become Lata Mangeshkar because he has an aptitude in a particular area and not in the other. We talk about two kinds of aptitude tests here. We have multiple aptitude tests which we also call as generalized and the other is independent which we also call as specialized. Now a lot of aptitude tests are basically done to assess whether you will be good in that area or not. Because if you're not going to do well in that area, you will get frustrated. You will not be enjoying that process. So any kind of entrance test for any course also tells you the same thing, whether your capability is there or not. If your capability is limited in that area and you keep working, you cannot be good in that area, no matter how hard you try. Somebody not having the aptitude for mathematics may be having the aptitude for SST. So better to take up humanities and not to take up science or commerce because that's maths based. Okay, let's look at interest. Now interest basically means when we talk about what I like. If the two match, aptitude and interest, career can be the best option. Let's look at the last topic. Now this topic is very much there in the textbook, but it has been deleted from the syllabus. We'll quickly try and cover it. Now Terman in his research in 1920 found that persons with high IQ were not necessarily creative. Now there's no guarantee here that if you have high IQ, you will be very creative. Let me give an example here. A girl is able to have new ideas, is able to create new things, but she's not able to mug up, she's not able to remember the course content, but she can definitely have new ideas. So this is where she has creativity, but she has average intelligence. Now people with average intelligence can definitely have high creativity, but people with high intelligence may not have a high creativity. So up to a level, the two are positively correlated, but there's no guarantee that after that level, they will be correlated. Last point here is, creativity and intelligence test have a major difference that creativity tests are very much open-ended. They give you a scope to express yourself the best possible manner. If I ask you a question, what will happen if the world has everybody as six feet tall? Your answer will be open-ended. Everybody will give different answers. Whereas intelligence has a fixed answer, like an MCQ or a factual data. Who was the first Prime Minister of India? You don't have to use any creativity here. So that is where we talk about divergent and convergent thinking. Divergent thinking is when your thinking is creative. Convergent is when your thinking boils down to one answer. Okay, let's summarize today. We talked about the major topic of culture, how it relates to intelligence. We talked about abilities which are specific in nature, aptitude and interest. We talked about creativity and intelligence. And of course, we talked about how emotions play a role in intelligence. We wind up for today. Thank you. Thank you.